My name's Dave Judd and I'm a Technical Specification Advisor at Ecological Building Systems UK. And we're here today to talk about suspended timber floors. These are typically found in houses built between the early to mid 20th century, but also later on. They're typically characterised with the use of timber floor joists fixed into the external walls to act as a support for an internal floor, such as floorboards most typically. And there are four main characteristics of a suspended floor. The first one being is that there is a separation between the internal floor covering and the ground below. And this ventilated space is very important as it enables cross-flow ventilation to take away any moisture which may have come up through the ground and therefore helping to keep the timbers dry and free from rot and decay. This is achieved using air bricks as we're simulating here on, on our model. These would be located at opposite ends of the suspended floor area in order to create a cross flow of ventilation. This basically acts to keep humidity levels low and stop condensation forming in the uh, subfloor void. Another typical characteristic of suspended floors are what are sometimes referred to as sleeper walls. These are essentially support walls which provide extra support for the timber joists. These are particularly found in uh, larger floor areas where the floor joists are span in bigger distances. The ground beneath the floor could be any mixture of different surfaces. It could be a concrete slab, it could be clay, soil, or it could be rubble. So what's the problem with suspended timber floors? Why are we considering the need to thermally upgrade them? Well, people often complain that they're cold and drafty. We have to remember that by design, they're meant to be that way. The ventilated space beneath the floor joists was a way of ensuring that the timbers remain dry and free from rot. The design was never also intended to be insulated. So we have heat escaping through these floors via drafts and just by sheer lack of insulation. But nowadays, we want our living spaces to be relatively draft free and warmer. And it's estimated that there are around 10 million suspended timber floors in the UK and that typically 15% of the heat losses from a building will go down through a timber suspended floor. In situ modelling of timber suspended floors suggests that this figure could be much higher. At Ecological Building Systems, we've developed a solution for thermally upgrading timber suspended floors. We've kept in mind the need to both insulate the floor but also to eliminate drafts. We call this air tightness, but also the need to maintain the floor's drying capacity and to protect against condensation. The main elements of the floor solution include a wind type breather membrane, which provides the air tightness, and it also acts as a, a cradle for the insulation to sit on. We've got natural fiber insulation, a robust vapor control membrane, which protects against condensation, and this is all held together with air tightness tapes. In this next section, we'll briefly look at the various products and materials used in our suspended floor system. This is the ProClimber Solitex Plus reinforced wind tight breathable membrane to support the insulation and prevent air moving through the insulation from below. This is the ProClimber DA. It's a robust vapour control membrane to provide air tightness and vapour control. Here we have the Thermo Hemp Combi Jute Natural Insulation. This is a breathable insulation for installation between the floor joists. This is the Pro Climber Tescon Varna tape for sealing the membrane overlaps. This is the Tescon Sprimer. We use this to prime dusty surfaces such as the perimeter walls before using the tapes to stick the membranes back to the walls. This is the ProClima Contiga Solido SL tape. This is a plasterable tape for sealing the membranes to the perimeter walls. This is the ProClima Orcon F. This is an airtight adhesive sealant. It's an alternative product to using the Contiga Solido SL tape. This next tape is the ProClima Extra Seal Encores. This is a stretchy rubber butyl tape ideal for sealing around pipe penetrations. This is the ProClima K-Flex Airtight Pipe Grommet. 
This is the one we use to seal the pipe in our suspended floor model. So now we're going to look in a bit more detail at our floor model to give you an idea of all the elements and what it looks like. So to begin with, I'm going to work from the bottom up. So I'm just going to start to roll back a few layers so that we can show you in more detail how it all fits together. On the underside of the system, we've got our Proclima Solitex Plus breather membrane. And you can see here that it's wrapped over and down and then spans across to the next joist and so on. So it's a kind of castellating effect. The membrane's fixed to the joist using staples and it's also pinned to the inner edge of the joists just as a way of supporting the staple fixings and to help provide a nice tight surface for the insulation to rest on. So the idea is to have a, a continuous layer of the membrane running across the entire floor area um, all the way to the very edge where it is then taped back to the wall using the Proclima Contiga Solido SL tape. So this is, as mentioned before, this is providing the air tightness for the floor. Um, but it's also providing a hammock for the insulation to sit on. And in this model, we've tried to sort of demonstrate a scenario where the joist is parallel to the wall, but literally an inch or 25 millimeters away from the wall. But it's just to show that it is actually possible and important to continue lapping the membrane over that final joist, curling it down and then lapping it back up the wall before sealing it with the Contiga Solido SL tape. This way you've got continuity of the membrane, continuity of that airtight draft proof layer. If you were to terminate the membrane here, you would obviously leave a significant gap around the edge of your floor, which would enable drafts to come up behind and underneath the skirting boards and so on. We're trying to establish a con continuity of the membrane across the whole floor area. But of course, the other two walls of the room, you've got your joists running straight into the wall. So it's also important to create an airtight connection between the membrane and the wall around these joist connections too. And this can also be achieved using the Proclima Contiga Solido SL tape. It's a little bit more of a fiddle compared to the, uh, the parallel joist scenario, but this detailing here shows that strips of tape can be independently applied to a longer strip between the joists in order to create that airtight connection between the membrane and the wall. At this stage, you're probably going to need to deal with central heating pipes if they are there. Um, so on this model, we've incorporated a pipe that's notched into the top of the joists. So the aim here is just to show that it needn't create a big problem for our floor solution because it is entirely possible to run the membrane underneath the pipe work or if the membrane needs to be cut, it's possible to re-tape it and then wrap a, a flexible stretchy tape around the pipe in order to give you back that airtight connection. The tape here is one we introduced earlier. It's the Proclima Ecstasy Along Cores. It's a very stretchy, rubbery tape, good for this kind of use. Over here, we've got a pipe coming up, and this is typically what you'd find. You know, in the real world scenario, you'd have a radiator here. So in this section, we've slid one of the airtight grommets over the pipe, and we've stuck it back down to the membrane. So that's a completely airtight seal around that pipe connection. Once the breather membrane's in place, we then insert the natural fiber insulation between the joists. And as mentioned, this insulation is a combination of hemp fiber and jute. So it forms a nice natural breathable insulation and it fully fills the space between the floor joists and it's snugly fitting 
If anything, it's slightly oversized between the width of the joists so that it very snugly fits into that space. So the insulation is rolled out and inserted between every joist section. So we've already talked about the importance of running the breather membrane over and through and around this small gap between the last joist and the wall. But it's also important to add insulation in there. And it usually involves a bit of cutting and splicing of your insulation material in order that you can fit it into that space nice and snugly. So there you can see we've got a nice tight breather membrane sealed to the wall. We've got insulation between the joists and we've made special attention to um, continuing that solution all the way through this sort of detail of the joist at the edge. So once all of the insulation is installed, the ProClimber DA vapour control membrane is laid across the top of the joists, over the top of the breather membrane and the insulation. As so, then it's stapled down onto the joists. As with the breather membrane, the vapour control membrane is also taped with the Tescon Varna tape wherever there is an overlap of the membrane. This is the membrane that protects against condensation. So any humidity in the living space, the membrane acts as a barrier and prevents the humidity from moving downwards where it may possibly turn into condensation. As with the breather membrane, the vapor control membrane is also sealed back to the perimeter wall with the Contiga Solido SL tape. The ProClima Tescon Varna tape is a solid acrylic glue and it's most effective once pressure activated. And the best way to do this is to use the press fix tool. So once the tape's in position, you simply run the press fix tool along the line of the tape, applying a moderate amount of pressure. This ensures that the glue is fully activated and it also ensures that the tape is fully connected to the membrane in all places. When we're applying the ProClima Contiga Solido tape, it's important first to use the primer this is because walls, which may be bare stone, brick or plaster, are very often dust producing. And this can affect the adhesion of the tape. So it's important, therefore, to first apply the primer, then apply the Contiga Solido SL tape, and then use the press fix tool to apply moderate pressure to the tape. And in the area where our pipe was coming up vertically through the floor, we pre-installed an airtight grommet and stuck it back to the membrane in order that we've got a fully airtight connection at that point. So that's our main layering of the system. We've got the wind type breather membrane, the natural fibre insulation, so that's dealing with our drafts, that's dealing with the insulation, it's dealing with the heat loss. We've got the vapour control membrane, which is dealing with the moisture control, protecting against condensation, and we've got the tapes which are making it all come together in order to perform optimally. So once all the elements of the floor system are fully installed and the membranes are stuck back to the perimeter walls, it's then simply a case of relaying the floorboards, and reattaching your skirting boards back to the wall. Once the skirting boards are in place, all of the taping of the membranes will be fully out of view. So in conclusion, what we have here is a fully insulated floor. It's also an airtight floor, so we've dealt with those issues of draftiness. And it's also a floor that can maintain its drying capacity and protect against condensation risk.